some prediction goes on that to say that this world is going to end. Yes or no? Have you heard? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see how many of you have heard that prediction. How many of you have heard the prediction again in other words? Oh, no. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, okay. And, uh, and did you believe it? No. no. I also did not believe it. But I uh, recently, recently, uh, recently somebody from America, I met this man, uh, not the first time, but somehow I felt some affinity with him. And uh, in the course of my talking with him, he said, you know, uh, it says that soon this is two thirds of the Earth's population will be wiped out, and that uh, I, I did not, you know, I was not surprised, yeah, at what is happening in the of the world. And uh, so, when a group of uh, uh, Sri Lankan nuns came recently, we invited a group of actually a couple of three three of them nuns and uh, we had the same meditation teacher in Sri Lanka they came to run a, a retreat in uh, Selangor as well as in Alokarawa and uh, so before they left I told this uh, one to the chief uh, nun and says uh, that uh, is what I heard that uh, soon maybe two thirds of the earth population wiped out. And then she said to me, she said, what she heard from Sri Lanka, she heard from the, a monk, the practicing monk, he said, this monk had said that uh, very soon only uh, <coughs> one third of the earth population will remain. So, I said, so no, maybe they got it from the same source. <laughs> one say two thirds will be gone, and another say one third will be left. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, so uh, even though, even though the threat of pain on the world is, uh, you know, no longer a threat, but I truly feel that we are living in a time. Of uh, great changes, big changes are taking place in the world. Yeah? With or without our knowledge. Yeah? One that is very obvious is uh, when you look at the uh, situation in the, the weather pattern, the climate change, yeah? it has changed dramatically. Yeah? The seasons change. Yeah? And uh, the occurrence of uh, more wild, fierce weather patterns are also there. Yeah. And uh, then, when you look at what is happening now, I think the last few days I've been hearing news that there's an American, uh, what we call the uh, U.S. shutdown. How many of you heard that one? American shutdown. Ah, yeah. Well, the politics in America is such, and uh, and uh, you know, we are all we are all uh, uh, whether you like it or not, we are living in a system. Uh, your wealth, the wealth, the money that you all have, is all based on. The that credit system, yeah, the creating man money actually is not real wealth money. Yeah, it's printed not. Recently when some people gave me unbound and I opened, I saw new notes, I said, wow, this one problem. <coughs> Sharp note, <man. laughs> yeah. But this is something that uh, the earth uh, yeah, even at the economic level, yeah, it's very uncertain, very, very uncertain, yeah. We are living at this time, yeah, and uh, socially, you can you also know, politically also, you know. So, uh, when we 
we hear news, whenever I hear news that uh, of the uh, crisis, the kind of crisis due to man-made crisis such as wars that are being fought in Syria, in uh, Afghanistan, and in at least more than at least 40 different countries. There are these 40 wars, 14, right? being fought here and there. Yeah? And uh, these are man-made crises. Then the frequencies of uh, earthquakes and other things. Yeah? A few days ago I heard that they were expecting an earthquake in Philippines, then they sent a tsunami in this part of the country. Yeah? But I think and now I hopefully it's all over. Yeah? So don't <coughs> don't think. Uh, I would recommend you all uh, to get a, uh, I think it's in the uh, Discovery Channel or, you know, in BBC had produced this very good do documentary on uh, the Wonders of Universe or something. Anyone watch Wonders of Universe? Yeah? Uh, it's it's good for you to watch how this planet Earth came into being. How the planet Earth came to be. Yeah? And uh, through outer space. Yeah? And all the, uh, what you call, molten lava. And, uh, you know, every night, if you look into the sky, you will see some falling stars. Have you seen falling stars? No? Yeah, like right that. And uh, uh, there are falling stars in there. Otherwise, you better come to Australia, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah? Because maybe Australian sky is not more you can see in the desert from the desert area. Yeah? You can't see whenever it's there are lights around. You can't see. When everything is pitch dark, then you can see the sky, you can see the heavens very clearly. Yeah. And uh, these uh, falling uh, stars are actually uh, stars that, when you call disintegrate, yeah, disintegrate. And then, when the star disintegrate, then all the gases and all the dirt and this thing, they get into like a supernova, yeah. And then eventually they come back again and they reform a new star. So every now and then there's a new star one. So when we see all these things, this planet Earth is no different. Yeah? Yeah. Even though it may be millions or billions of years ago, yeah? but don't forget, when we hear this word million, billions of years, that means this Earth has been there long already, you know? Yeah? So uh, anything can happen. Whenever you go to, you know, you go to Guangmuzhong, you go to, uh, what do you call it, uh, Huangshan in, 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 in China, you go and see all the, all the mountains and this thing. You know that they were all were underwater? They were all underwater. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, these are, that is why you must have a clearer, a bigger picture of what's happening around the world. And then, ask yourself, yeah, are we prepared to face? Are we prepared to face the, what you call, the changes that are taking place in the world? How are we prepared? How are, do we prepare ourselves? Huh? Uh, some people say stock food, uh, I know that. And that. Yeah, you can stock some food, there's no problem. But only thing when the crisis comes, you may not be at home, you may be working, <laughs> yeah? or you may be uh, in some other friend's place. Yeah? Yeah. So, what is the best thing to do to prepare yourself to face crisis? Tell me. to my 
happened when I got all these inflammations, two things came to my mind. One thing came, this Dhamma. Mano Bhupam Gama Dhamma, Mano Sita Mano Maya. Mind is the forerunner of all events, all phenomena. That means, whatever happens, okay, whatever happens outside, how we respond, how we react, will depend on how we have developed our mind. Do you understand? Yeah. If we have developed our mind, and the Buddha very clearly mentioned, in the Ratana Sutta is mentioned that we should develop our mind until our mind becomes so strong like a rock and the wind that blows this, the rock is not shaken. Yeah? So, can you be shaken by winds? No? No? And uh, how much we are shaken by this little bit of bad news? You are also terribly upset. We need to cultivate our mind to that extent that our mind, we will not be shaken. <clears throat> and uh, that's one thing. Why we need to cultivate our mind. Two, is this, that no matter where you are, no matter where you want to go, there is no place in the world that is perfectly safe. Understand? Right? So what is it that can give you, what is it that gives you real protection? Answer? Dhamma. Dhammo Hawe Rakati Dhammachari. Say this. Dhammo Hawe Rakati Dhammachari. This to me is a mantra. But it's more than a mantra because it has meaning. It says here, one who practices the Dhamma, the Dhamma protects. Yeah? But when I first learned this stanza, I learned it in the form of a mantra. Because before I became a monk, I was uh, following a lay teacher from Sri Lanka in the, when I was studying in New Zealand. I met him, so I joined him. And he was uh, hitchhiking around the country. So I carried his bags, and I also joined him in hitchhiking. Yeah? That's before I became a monk. And you know, sometimes uh, uh, we are on the street, on the roadside, and uh, and I have to, you know, this avanton, this uh, you know, <coughs> and one by one the car don't stop <laughs> until it became dark, evening. Then I was also having some fear, you know, when it's dark, no place to go, <laughs> no shelter. So I went to my teacher and I said, it's getting dark now. <laughs> then my teacher looked at me, he was just sitting down and you know, his, his hand uh, folded his hands and he says, go, say this, Namo Buddha, Namo Dhammai, Namo Sangha. He says, Dhammo Hawe Rakati Dhammachari. Go and stand there and say this. So, no more 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 no I was, I was involved in an accident in Australia. We had a new van, Tarago Ford van, and the van went two, one, two, three, 
you know what? One, two, three. Uh, the, 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 it is the, what do you call it? Somersault. One round, two round, three round. Oh. And at that time, I was practicing. I was with beads, malas. I was practicing. Uh, I was at that time, uh, <coughs> I was doing uh, uh, rains, uh, spending rains in, in, the, in the forest in Thailand. So, puto, 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 puto. So when the tent, when the when the van turned, yeah, skidded and went to the side, and then then I was just puto, puto, puto. <laughs> the best part of it, you won't believe, was actually the van actually went very serious. There was a big tree just by the side of the road. And this man went and then hit and then got stuck just, you know, in between the tree and the, the side of the road. Otherwise, we could plunge down 50 meters down. Yeah? And the, the van was right up. But after the van went this way, this way, this way, and then stopped, after that, the beautiful Thai music. You won't believe. I thought it must be from the radio, from the motor car radio. No, it cannot be. Impossible to get Thai channel from that part of Australia in the outback, near very, you know, remote area. What can this be? This can only be the Deva's protection. None of us in the van had any fear. None of us. <laughs> then it was already dark in the night, and in that part, a very deserted place, nobody would come. No cars. But. So I again remember what formula? Dhammo Havi Rakati Dhammajari. So I told that, uh, you know, one young girl who came, she thinks I says, go out there and go there and say, Dhammo Kutai, Dhammo Dhammai, Dhammo Sangai, Dhammo Havi Rakati Go and say this, recite this in there. She go out, recite. And you believe it? Within a few minutes, a car stopped. Then after that, somebody went into the car and smelled beer. Near us now. We said, no, go. We won't follow it. What do you think? Please inform the police that we are here. <laughs> yeah. And true enough, we asked this man out of nowhere. His child was very sick. And he just came back from a park. He is driving this child to see a doctor. So he informed the police, and the police came, and uh, you know, police were so surprised that we are still alive. Now, like that, you want some more stories? I have some more stories, but you know, this is just enough for you. But truly, I firmly believe Dhamma, Dhamma is a thing that will guide and protect you in times of trouble. Understand? Even if we have to move on, we move on with the Dhamma. So that is why. And what is it that when I ask myself, what have I done from the time I became a monk? Yeah? And uh, then I remember immediately after even before I became a monk. Yeah? My teacher taught me metta, loving kindness. And I practiced metta from that time onwards, before I became a monk. Yeah? And, uh, and after I became a monk, I started to teach metta everywhere I go. Yeah? Why? Because I saw 
how Metta has transformed my life. It has changed my life. Yeah. When I was young, I was uh, very hard tempered yeah, because I was the only uh, son in the family. I have two other sisters, so everything I want, I I could get. Yeah. But when I cannot get, I I show my tantrums. Yeah. So I got used to it. But not only that, there must be some other reasons also. Yeah. And uh, my mother told me, my grandfather told me, everyone told me, and asked me to reduce and overcome anger. I tried various ways, but I can't. I prayed myself, and still, no. Finally came this practice of metta. That is why I see metta really is the antidote for anger, for hatred, for grudges. If you really do have some anger and grudges in your heart, I suggest you really start practicing metta. It will help you to clear. And remember, as long as you have somebody that you don't like, somebody that you hate, you still you are not going away in samsara. You are not going out of samsara in a hurry. As long as you have somebody who you hate, you don't like, you will still come back. Do you know that? As long as you have somebody whom you are attached to, you still have to come back. As long as you have somebody whom you hate, you don't like, you still have to come back. So I think we better settle up. <laughs> That's why, uh, you know, there's no time for me to tell you everything about Metta. I think you all know, but in case some of you who want, you can, I have my CDs outside there, you can uh, take one of my CDs on Metta and listen. And in the talk, I explain how Metta helps one to have the open heart to seek forgiveness and be able to forgive others. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And uh, when you practice, after practicing, actually it's easier to practice metta, overcome anger, than overcome craving. You know that? Craving and attachment is more difficult to overcome than anger. But these two are related. When you have craving, you will have attachment, right? When you attach, not like this. When you crave, you want something. You get it. You are happy, right? You want more. And then you become attached. And then when you cannot get, you get angry, you get upset. Right? So you can see that Craving which leads to attachment leads also to anger and hatred. Yeah. So, first learn how to reduce anger and then after that reduce your craving. You want to learn how to reduce craving? Yes. Okay. First, you must know what craving is about. But craving actually rises through our eyes, our ears, nose, tongue, body, and the mind. Yeah, from these sense bases arise thoughts, and then we think about it again and again, again and again, again and again. That is how craving arises. Yeah, you think of something that is nice. You give some, after you see something, you say it's nice. And then you give, you, you give some value to it. Beautiful. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, you feel the desire rising. That desire, that craving is a force. It's a force that drives you to get what you want. When you get what you want, you feel Satisfied, but what you don't realize what you have done. 
you have actually put in fuel. You have added fuel to your this driving force. That is why your craving becomes stronger and stronger until you become so attached. And then one day you cannot get what you want. That's when suffering happens. Isn't it? So now that you know that craving is conditioned by our thoughts, now, if we can, if I tell you, if you can steal your mind, no thoughts, isn't that the way to overcome craving? Can you steal your mind now? Just try to find mind. Quiet. No <laughs> thought. You try? Can or not? Can. Okay, how long? One minute? Two minutes? And then the thoughts come. You can try. And you go back home, you say, Now I know the secret. I don't want to think. I'm just saying. <laughs> Then see what happens. I will tell you, it's not so easy because this these thoughts, men, this mental creation has been going on for a long, long time. If you don't believe, most of the time, when you are free, when you are not doing anything, your mind goes wild. Go and create all sorts of thoughts, isn't it? <laughs> all sorts of worries, la, all sorts of anxiety, la. People still living, you think people are going to die, uh, and then you, know, <laughs> you know, so much of uh, worries and anxiety you, you think about. Yeah? Before the, ter before the children sit for exam, you already think with the, oh, my children don't know whether they can pass or not. <laughs> and then the children, whether, when they, before they sit the exam, they think, Ay -ay, what if I fail? <laughs> so all sorts of thoughts, all sorts of things comes up. Yeah? No, but uh, actually there is a way. There is a way how you can silence this mind. Because this mind has been going on thinking and rethinking for so long, so you need a little bit longer time. But there is a shortcut. <laughs> you want <my> shortcut? <laughs> the shortcut is this. You must just disappear from this world for one month, Canada. Three months, Canada. Wow, three months! <laughs> Some people, they fall down, they sprain their leg, they have to go for the, you know, they bend it. Also, three months are uh, next video. But since you have not fallen down, your leg still good, why don't you take three months off? Do many things? No, no, cannot. I'm still, I have to work, cannot, cannot, cannot. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, this is the, you know how I became a monk? No, you were saying, take three months off to work, holidays. <laughs> yes, holiday. Holiday. Holy, holy, holy days. <laughs> that means every day, morning to night, practice, practice mindfulness, sati mindfulness, morning to night, night to morning, the continuity of this, because the continuity of mindfulness, that is it that is going to break the heavy pattern. You can practice now, now you practice half an hour, one hour every day. It's good. It is good. You will get into calm and quietness. But that is not going to break your habit pattern. <coughs> you need a longer period. And I tell you, don't forget, the Buddha has stayed. Even Angulimala, the man who killed so many people, he became enlightened. Angulima. Do 
dead. Another one, Amrapali. Amrapali, the Kandista. She was a very high class prostitute. But the Buddha was able to guide her through for her to realize the truth and become an Arahant. How did this, all this happen? Actually, the secret, the important thing is this, you know, how, what we have done in the past, right? Actually, it is all gone. We cannot. But we are often tormented by our memories of what we have done. It's only through mindfulness when we are guided with mindfulness, then we let go of the past, let go of the future, and just live in the present more and more, more and more, more and more. As we learn to live more and more in the present, slowly, 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 the past, slowly, you know, gets knocked out. Then our mind will become more and more quiet and silent. Then, we train our mind in this silence and quietness for half an hour, one hour, two hour, three hour in sitting, in walking, in lying down, everything so quiet. The silence in our mind will eventually break the habit pattern of, mind, of our mind to create thoughts. And that's where after your retreat, you come out, you see something, huh? No other thoughts create in your mind. Then you go back, people scold you. Huh? No thoughts create. You know, fight back, you don't have to listen. Uh, this is what you call the how the training of the mind. You can train, you can steal your mind, you can quiet down your mind, and you can reduce and overcome craving and attachments. Huh? It is actually through the cultivation of mindfulness. Yeah. Now, the foundation, the foundation of this practice yeah. is, what is the foundation of this practice? in order to develop our wisdom and insight. What's the foundation? Motivation. Huh? Motivation. No, the, the truths, the four noble truths are the, the thing that we want to realize, that wisdom. But the foundation to realize this, what is it? Huh? Eight for power, yes, but actually what is it that gives you the motivation, the drive to practice noble and Gopal? Huh? What is it that gives you the drive to get out of samsara? What is it that wants to give you the drive, the motivation to purify your mind? You know, there must be some motivation. I will tell you, normally people don't take care of their health so much until until one day they go to doctor and doctor say, you know, and uh, you got cancer? You got only six months more to live. Oh, really? And you go back home. You look and you call. Where got next retreat? Nah? <laughs> where, where got retreat? Where got Qigong class? Nah? And, and, uh, but vegetarian and uh, organic organic food eating. <laughs> Most people start living when they got this uh, either cancer or they have high cholesterol or blood pressure, high blood pressure or this thing. Then only their life start. You don't have to start the life that we are. But most people start that way. Yeah. No, you got to know all these things, yeah, and uh, actually suffering. When you see suffering, when you really 
then you begin to see suffering. That will give you the motivation to practice. And what is it that will help you to motivate to see suffering? This is what metta is about. Metta and karuna. When you cultivate loving kindness, you wish all beings to be well and happy. You close your eyes and all beings be well and happy. Sate, sata, suti, tata. Open your eyes, you look around, people around you are not happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah? So, but if you really truly practice metta, and you look around and you see people not happy, there will be another thought that will arise in you that may this, may this suffering be, no whatever suffering, may she be free from suffering. That is a thought of compassion. Right? And as you think like that more and more, and you cultivate more and more metta and compassion, that the compassion will condition you to speak and to act, to do something for others. The moment you start doing things for others, you start serving others, you will start to see the manifestations of suffering. As long as you leave yourself alone at home, you don't see that much suffering. And you may think that the suffering you go through is hell. But the moment you go out and you go and help others, you see so much of suffering throughout the world. That is it that's going to motivate you. How can you help? Do you know, devotees come to see me with all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of problems. Sometimes I feel very bad. I say, sorry, lah, I cannot help you. Lah. And then I see the person go. Then I go to my room. I feel very sad. I cannot help you. <laughs> <laughs> then, what do I do? I determine. I determine to practice. I teach me to practice. I wish one day I can heal this people's problem. I can heal the heart and heal the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the thing that motivates me. But you must you need that kind of motivation. So Metta and Karuna will give you the right motivation to practice. Okay? In 2008, when I was invited to the United States uh, in California, I visited two institutes. I visited a few Buddhist centers and two organizations. One is Institute of Noetic Sciences. Another is Heart Math Institute. They are all scientific. They are actually uh, at the frontier of scientific investigation into human consciousness. Yeah? I did not know why I was I, I went to those places. I spent time with the top scientists in those institutes. After that I totally forgot about them. Until we started this Meta Round the World project. And this project, we say, we ask people to give 15 minutes, not every day, 15 minutes, full moon, on full moon day, once a month. <laughs> yeah. And some people think, no, 15 minutes, once a month, how can you help the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the next time we say, okay, we start month every day. Yeah, 15 minutes. Then this year we say full moon and new moon. Yeah? After that, now I say every day. <laughs> <laughs> to start off, we must not frighten people. Lah, no? <laughs> Once a month. <laughs> no. and, uh, but now, many people are doing it already. Many people are doing it. Yeah? 
because they see the benefits of it. Yeah, meta. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it how to convince people. You practice meta 15 minutes twice a month, or even every day. How can it help the world? Then I look into one of the magazines I received from the institutes. And this is about experiment that was done in America, in Washington, D.C. In a place where the crime rate was very high. They got 1,000 people to meditate there. And the scientists want to find how this meditation can affect the environment. Nothing really happened. They increased to 2,000. 3,000. And when it reached the 4,000 mark, the crime rate fell by 25% on that day. They repeated this experiment again and again. And again and again when they had the numbers, the crime rate fell. This experiment was taken even to some warring countries. When a group of people meditated, the crime rate, the aggression fell on that day. We cannot change everything, but we can make a difference. And this phenomenon is called uh, collective, the power of collective. That means, you know, you all may be meditating alone. It's good for you. But when you start to meditate together at the same time, something you get the synergy, the power of yeah, that strength.